Alright, I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you guys. The very first time I ever heard of Archer was when it first came out, and and I thought to myself, I'm not really sure if I'm really gonna watch this show. I mean, there are shows like The Simpsons, Futurama, Family Guy, really big adult cartoons that I watched while growing up, so I thought to myself, I don't really know if Archer is really for me. And then I became an adult and matured enough, and finally I just got around to it, and I thought, it was on Netflix, and I thought to myself, okay, I'll watch Archer, and see what I think of it. And when I finally watched season one, I thought to myself, turns out I am wrong. It's not one of the best adult cartoons out there. It's one of the best TV shows out there. Seriously, Archer is hilarious. It's a whole lot of fun, and I just want to talk about it. And I'm going to talk about it by season by season by season, like I did with the TV show Smallville, mostly because I had a whole lot of fun with that show, and I just kind of want to do it with the same thing with Archer. Even though Archer is not exactly seasonal, it's more like episodic, like the old cartoons that I that I used to enjoy, but I feel like every single season has its moments, and season one is most definitely one of those seasons. So, Archer stars Sterling Archer, codenamed Duchess, because, well, his mother, his mother chose the name because it was her dog's name, of course. That was a very, very creepy story, but anyway, it's, beside that, Archer is a drunk, he's an asshole, he is everything that everyone should hate, yet somehow you absolutely love the dude. I mean, he is insane, he is all over the place, and he's, well, in every single episode, he always has a drink in his hand, so... There's that. Basically, Archer is like is like James Bond and Jack Sparrow smir smirched into one. Boom. You got Sterling Archer right there. That's really who the guy is. And then you got Mallory Archer. Mallory Archer is his mother. She runs the whole spy business that they're under. <laughs> the, the spy business is named Isis, which is not exactly a good name when I really think about it. But maybe that's one of the jokes of the show. But anyway, once you meet Mallory Archer, suddenly you're thinking to yourself, a ton of stuff about Sterling Archer suddenly makes sense. Because she's his mother, and, well, she didn't exactly raise him in any way, shape, or form. But basically, she... There's a whole lot of bad words that I really want to call her, but this is YouTube, so I can't really say this type of stuff, but... Yeah, that's basically Mallory Archer, but Mallory Archer is definitely a whole lot of fun. She's not that one character where we're kind of sick of seeing all the time. And as a matter of fact, she brings out a whole lot of comedy to the moments when it's just between her and Sterling. It is a really big blast. Then you got Lana Kane. Lana Kane is, oh boy, Lana Kane has got to be the hottest cartoon star that... I have probably ever seen. Seriously, half the time that Lana is, like, in her undergarments, I'm just sitting there going, Lana's just a cartoon. Lana's just a cartoon. Lana's just a cartoon. Uh, nope, it's not helping. Anyway, L Lana is is basically Archer's ex. She's now dating the biggest weirdo, Cyril Figgis, in the entire group. And she basically hates Archer. She swears at him all the time. She shoots him a couple of times. And half the time, I'm thinking to, I'm thinking to myself, okay, either that she absolutely loves Archer and wants to get back back with him or she wants to put a bullet through his head. Either way, I'm pretty sure that's exactly who Lana Kane is. But Lana Kane is by far one of the most interesting characters and one of the biggest character growths in the entire show and it's a whole lot of fun to watch to watch her on on screen, but also it's a whole lot of fun to see her in season one as well. And then you got Cyril Figgis. Cyril Figgis is, well, he's the loser. I mean, he's dating Lana Kane, which is a major, probably the biggest thing that ever happened in his life. But still, he is a big loser. He's a control freak. He's the guy that controls their accounts and all such. And that's all I gotta say about it. Cyril's basically the punching bag out of the out of the whole group. And then you got Cheryl or Carol or Sure, or Carla, or whatever she likes to call herself. Seriously, Cheryl likes to change her name all the time. Cheryl is, I really wish that I would, I would never, ever meet a girl like this. Seriously, Cheryl is, to call her creepy is basically a compliment in her book. I mean, she thinks physical and mental abuse is sexy for some reason. And then you got Pam. Pam has got to be one of the best characters in the show. Pam basically is the one that that kind of spreads rumors. She hears something, then everybody's going to know about it, and it always gets under everybody's nerves. But every time Pam is on screen, I am having a 
absolute ball. Pam has got to be one of my favorite characters in the show. And also, you got Krieger. Krieger is, oh boy, oh boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, to call him mad scientist is a bit of an understatement. And to think about his backstory, well, I'll get to his backstory in another season. But basically, Krieger... Krieger is the guy that controls all the gadgets and he builds them stuff and everything. He invents a whole lot of things and some of the inventions are weird and some of the inventions are kind of kind of even more weird when I really think about it. I mean, in this season the only the only machine that we ever hear him that he ever built was a sex robot that he that he calls <laughs> Fister Roboto. Yeah, that's what he calls the robot. Yeah, fist robot. Yeah, somebody's gonna go to hell. But any, but anyway, I can I can guarantee you that with all these really cool characters shoved into one, you get to you get to really know exactly who they are and where their characters are going. And what I, one thing I really like about season one is that it kind of feels like season one of Smallville, where they don't just they don't just throw everything at the screen. They they basically space it out and let these characters get some breathing room to basically exercise on what these characters are going to be. I mean, you never know how long a TV show is going to be, so give it give it some breathing room so that the audience can get so that the audience can get connected to these characters and then it builds into the story that we all know and love. And Archer does it like a pro. Seriously, Archer season 1, I can't think of one bad episode in season one, my favorite episode, of course, is the airship episode. The airship episode, oh my gosh. Think of laughing from start to finish, and yet somehow, even today, after watching it God knows how many times, you are still laughing at it. It's still hilarious, even to this day. That is a win right there. And what I can remember after watching my first run of season one, every single episode, I was laughing. I could not think of one bad episode or an episode I would skip in season one. And another great thing about season one is that as soon as the season wrapped up, I was like, holy crap, it's season two already? Wait, how long was I watching the show? I was watching it from start to finish. That is a win right there. And I, all I just wanted was a whole lot more episodes of of season one. But then again, there are several other seasons, so I'm not complaining here. But anyway, guys, season one of Archer is a hands-down winner for anyone who wants to start a new TV show. And if you're not really thinking much about Archer, seriously, I would recommend checking it, checking it out. Season one will definitely get you hooked, and later seasons down the road will definitely keep you watching from years to come. So I will say, season one of Archer is legendary. So guys, season one of Archer, have you seen it? What did you think of it? Whatever you thought, comment below, and I'll see you in the next video.